We're going to record our first MIDI track in this video. Now, MIDI, unlike audio, doesn't contain any actual sound. You can't burn a MIDI file to an audio CD and then stick it in a CD player. MIDI is basically a set of instructions, and there are different types of MIDI instructions that can be recorded, and they're called MIDI messages. And we're going to deal with the most basic kind, which are note messages that contain information like what note to trigger, at what velocity, at what pitch, on which MIDI channel, and for how long. But there are other types of MIDI messages as well, like continuous controllers or pitch bend or program changes. So the idea is that you record the MIDI information into Pro Tools, and then it plays it back to a sound source. In the old days, before digital audio workstations, which are what Pro Tools and programs like this are referred to as, we used to call them sequencers, because what they would do is record these MIDI messages and then spit them out and play them back, and they sequenced up all the MIDI information to play back. But now we combine audio with that and call them digital audio workstations. So let's get set up to record MIDI. Now the first thing is to set some MIDI settings under the setup menu in MIDI. We're going to set up our input devices, meaning which input devices that are connected to our computer do we need Pro Tools to recognize. Now it defaults to enabling all of the MIDI inputs that I have available in my audio MIDI setup but I can selectively enable or disable them. I'm going to take off the IAC drivers. I know I'm not going to need that. I don't even need all these other ones, but I'm going to take them off just to show you how they are restricted from showing up in the menus on the instrument or MIDI tracks. So these are the MIDI input enable devices. I have MIDI in on my 828 Mark II. I'm not even going to enable the sync port, and I have an MT4 with two ports. So let's click OK. Now the next thing, and this is an important concept, is we need to enable what's called MIDI through. And we do that under the Options menu, and it defaults to being on, but you can toggle it on or off there. And what this means is when you play your MIDI keyboard controller, either keyboard or guitar or drum pads, whatever, you're sending out messages, and then it's getting captured by Pro Tools and routed back out. So MIDI through allows these messages to get routed out to the sound or the destination that's set up on the track. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to switch to our mix window. We have our instrument track here. I'm going to close the transport for a moment just to give us more room. We have the bass track here, and this is an instrument track, and it kind of serves double duty. It acts as a host for our software instrument, and it also acts as a MIDI track to record and playback MIDI data. So let's call up an instrument in the Insert menu here. I'm going to click Hold, and I'm going to go to Plugin and choose Instrument, and I'm going to go to Structure Free, which ships with Pro Tools. It's a simple plugin, and it's what we call multi timbral it works on up to 16 MIDI channels. You can have up to 16 separate sounds loaded in and triggered and being used at once. I'm going to call up a sound from this drop-down menu here. I'm going to go to Finger Bass. Now, let's close this up for the moment. We're done with it for now. And we can see here that it's set to playback on MIDI channel 1, A1, and there's our 16 MIDI channels. So you can have actually more than 16. You can multiply that by all these port numbers. But we're playing back now on port A, MIDI channel 1. So let's close this up and look at setting the MIDI input selector and MIDI output selector. Now in this top field, we need to set which MIDI port and channel we want for this track to receive data from. Now it defaults to all, and this is fine if you're a single player at home working with a regular setup. That means any keyboard or controller that's hooked up to any of my ports on any MIDI channel will all get recognized. But if you have multiple players, let's say you have one guy playing MIDI drum pads, another person playing MIDI keyboard, another playing MIDI guitar, you can set the discrete inputs here for which specific port and channel you want recognized for each MIDI or instrument track. I'm going to leave it at all for now. And now we have the output routing. Where do we want the MIDI that's played back on this track routed to? Well, we want it routed to our structure instrument on port A, channel 1. And this is what I mean by serving double duty. These are MIDI functions here. The MIDI track part of this object is saying, I'm going to receive data on all, and I'm going to send out to structure 1. It just happens that this is also the place that's hosting that structure instrument. It could be a separate MIDI track, and we could set these same parameters here, and it would access the sound. So now that we have that set up, let's switch back to the edit window, and I can hit my keyboard and we'll hear sound. And that's because the MIDI through is enabled. If I take this off, we won't hear any sound. So it routes what's coming to the MIDI input selector through to the MIDI output selector on that track. Now there's a couple of other settings that pertain to MIDI through, and I'm going to go to the Preferences window, and we go to the MIDI page over here, and I want to start by looking at this over here, Default Through Instrument. So in addition to routing the MIDI signal to the currently record enabled or selected track, we can also have a Default Through Instrument that'll automatically default to routing MIDI through somewhere else. 
and we can set a specific port or instrument for any instrument that we have instantiated or any of the MIDI ports. But this is the useful one, follows first selected MIDI track or none. But follows first selected MIDI track means that whatever track is available, MIDI through will get routed there. So even if I have my hi-hat track selected now and nothing's record enabled, I can hit my MIDI keyboard and it's triggering the bass because it's the first possible MIDI track. Now if I have that setting off or set to none, it won't get routed there because there's no default MIDI through. I'm hitting my keyboard, we're not hearing anything, there's no default through, so why would it go to the bass? And even here, it's not going to go through to there unless it's record enabled. Like that. So without having to record enable track, it's good to leave this set to the first selected MIDI track. That way you can call up a sound and you don't have to worry about record enabling. It'll trigger it right away, so it's great if you just want to call up a sound and play. Next thing I want to look at is the MIDI input filter, and that's over here under MIDI input filter. Now I talked briefly about the different types of MIDI messages. Well here we can select which types of messages we want to record. We can record all messages, only these ones that are selected, or all except these ones that are selected. This is a default set and I'm going to leave it like this for now, but let me just go through them briefly. The different types of MIDI messages are notes, pitch bend, which we want to capture for now. Those are pretty common if you have a pitch bend wheel on your keyboard controller or guitar. After touch refers to some controllers that allow for once you hit the note, you press down harder and it'll send a specific type of message called after touch and program changes. So these are default settings. I'm going to leave them for now. I'm going to record notes, pitch bend, and program changes, although I'm not using any. In fact, why don't I turn that off? I don't really need it. So I'm going to record notes and pitch bend, and then we have continuous controllers, and you can select a variety of controllers over here and choose which ones you want to include or exclude from up to a possibility of 127 controllers. All right, so we're set with that. I have my bass track set up. I'm record enabled. I'm going to call up the transport. And basically, I'm back at bar one. We have our count off on now. I'm going to hear two bars a click, and then I'm going to start recording. So I can start recording in various ways. We can hit command space bar, or I can hit F12, or I'm going to hit three on my numeric keypad. And I hit stop, and look what happened. It rounded off the region boundary to the nearest bar. That's the way MIDI works when we're recording MIDI. I'm going to hide the transport for a moment, and you'll see here that even though I ended my note there, it rounded off because I held it over a little bit to the next bar line. When you're recording audio, it'll stop exactly where you record, but for MIDI, it rounds it off to the nearest bar to make editing easier. So what I'm going to do for now is switch to grid mode, and I'm jumping ahead here, and just trim this down, and it'll snap right to the next bar line. So now I can hit return to zero, hit play, and we'll hear our MIDI track. We can correct the timing later, but there's our basic MIDI recording. And we're hearing the click now because I did change my click preferences here to have it during play and record. So there you go, basic MIDI 101. Stay tuned, see you for more in the next video.